Hey everybody, Paul Lake here with another physics problem solved. And uh, today um, we've got an inclined plane problem. So uh, let's read through it and get to it. If, if this video is helpful to you, please give it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribe to my channel. That'd be cool. All right, so we've got a 2,000 kilogram car is, held, uh, is to be held on a 20 degree incline by a rope in which the maximum tension is 8,000 newtons. Will the rope support the car? If the rope breaks, how far will the car have moved by the time its speed reaches 35 meters per second? So this is really two problems in one here, part A and B. They're very separate problems. Um, here's what uh, I think you need to know first. <coughs> Excuse me. You need to um, have a pretty good handle on Newton's second law. How to draw free body diagrams, we'll be doing that. Um, how to handle inclined plane problems in general, although I will teach that in this problem. And then, of course, uh, uh, to, especially for part B, we need kinematics for constant acceleration. So familiar, familiarize yourself with these concepts before you attempt this problem. And I do encourage you to attempt the problem before watching my solution. Um, to test yourself. So pause the video now and give it a try. Okay. <coughs> so let's uh, let's figure out what's given here. And so we've got a 2,000 kilogram car. It's on a 20 degree incline. So let me go ahead and draw that. So here's my horizontal. Here's um, my angle of incline is given to be 20 degrees. I'll draw my little car on here. And the car has a mass of 2,000 kilograms, okay? Now we're pulling on it with a rope, and I'm gonna call that tension force, F sub T for tension. And, um, and it's said that this, the, t the maximum tension force that that rope can take is 8,000 newtons, okay? And uh, yeah, so that's everything. So what we really uh, want to know, what we really want to find is, um, and, and this is for part A, we want to find, um, well, does the rope hold? In other words, is FT, this tension force in the rope, is it less than 8,000 newtons? If it is, then the rope will hold. But if it's greater than, if this tension force needs to be greater than 8,000 newtons, the rope will break and uh, it won't hold. Okay, so let's solve this. <coughs> now, um, drawing out the problem, drawing a picture of it with what's given in the picture is very, very important to do. Highly recommend you do that. Um, now we're going to redraw this part of it, and we're going to draw a free body diagram. And if you may recall that a free body. Oh, here's my car. Now I've, I, it's called a free body diagram because I'm going to free this object and 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 put it down here, uh, and just look at the outside forces that are acting on it. Okay. Now some people draw like to draw their free body diagrams as a dot. I do that sometimes. Um, if it makes things easier, but drawing a car is, isn't too hard. So I'm just going to do that. And so we've got this uh, gravitational force pulling the car down. And of course, the incline um, uh, provides a normal force. And remember that that normal force, it's called the normal force because it's perpendicular. So if I take that incline and I rotate it 20 degrees, well, that means the normal force between the car and the and the ramp is going to be well. It's perpendicular to the to the plane there, so it's off like that. So there's my normal force. Now I've got parallel to the incline. I've got this tension force acting like that. Now one of the things that it's it's holding it. So one of the things we can assume in what's given is that the acceleration is zero and also the velocity is zero. This is a, this problem is static. Okay. 
Now what I'm going to do is, uh, what, these are all the outside forces acting on the car. I've got the normal force. I, there's no friction here. And uh, so what I'm going to do now is identify my x and y direction. Now, I when I'm doing incline plane problems like this, I always tilt my x, y axis to match the, the um, incline. Why do I do that? It makes the problem easier to solve. Okay. Also, I know in part B that if I if this rope snaps, this car is going to accelerate down the incline. So that's why I'm going to choose to make down the incline positive x and perpendicular to the incline up like this is my positive y direction. Always a good idea to identify your x and y direction. And the reason this makes the problem easier to solve is because notice that the tension force and the normal force are already aligned with the x and y axis. So the only force that, that's, that has components in the x and y direction now is this weight. And so I'm going to have a normal component of the weight, and I'm going to have a parallel component of the weight. And one thing to notice, and I'm sorry if this is a little too dark, here, but if I rotate 20 degrees, I rotate the normal component of gravity 20 degrees from here. So if, if this is 20 degrees from here to here, this is that same angle. That's where that angle is located in this right triangle where I've taken my force vector, my force of gravity vector, and broken it up into its y component and its x component. Now this leg is adjacent to the angle. And notice that this mg, the weight force, is the hypotenuse of this right triangle. Well, you may recall that the adjacent leg of a right triangle can be found by multiplying the hypotenuse by the cosine of the angle. Remember, cosine theta is defined to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Multiply both sides by the hypotenuse, and you get the adjacent leg. Here's the hypotenuse. Here's the cosine of the angle. And through the same reasoning, this leg, this, this, this is the part of the weight of the car that's trying to pull it down the incline. It's opposite of this angle, so it's the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle of incline. This is always true for incline plane problems. You're always going to take the weight and break it up into mg cosine and uh, theta and mg sine theta. You're always going to do that. And remember that this component of the weight is parallel to the incline. A lot of students are tempted to make this a right triangle by, by making this horizontal. It's not horizontal. It's, it follows the, the plane. Um, uh, it follows that incline plane. It's parallel to it. Okay. So now I can, uh, I've, I've finished uh, the free body diagram and identifying uh, X and Y components. So now let's uh, add up all the forces in the X direction. And that will equal the net force. Now when you add all the forces in the X direction, that's equal to the net force in the X direction. And that will be equal to the mass of my free body diagram times the acceleration. Okay. So then I look at my free body diagram. I let the free body diagram, this, this tells me what to do. Add up all the forces on your free body diagram in the x direction. So I look, and in the positive x, I've got mg sine theta. And in the negative x, I've got, I mean, I can go plus negative f sub t, but I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna go minus f sub t. And uh, those are the only forces in the x direction, this one and this one. And now, we, we said that, it, that this car is being held by this rope. It's static. It's not accelerating. It's not moving. So there's no acceleration. So this is zero. So this is zero. And, oh, this tells me that the tension force is going to be equal to the weight of the object times the sine of the angle of incline. Oh, we can get right to the answer here. Let's plug in our values. This is 2,000 kilograms. G 
is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And if you want to use meters per second squared here, that's fine. Go ahead. I like the, the, the since there's nothing accelerating here, I always think it makes more sense to describe the strength of the gravitational field as being uh, 9.8 newtons of force on the car for every kilogram of mass on the car. And of course, that's why we're multiplying by 2,000 2, kilograms. And then the sine of 20 degrees. Plug that into a calculator. I've already done that. So the tension force, well, when you round it off, is 6,700 newtons. Okay, so that means that the tension force in this rope to keep that car static must be equal to 6,700 newtons. Well, it said in the problem that the maximum tension force is 8,000 newtons. Well, 6,700 newtons is less than 8,000 newtons, which is my maximum force. So therefore, we're below that maximum. So therefore, the rope supports the car. I mean, technically, this is my answer. That's what they asked. But here we've shown why exactly that's true. Okay. All right. That's part A. Now, part B, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use given, find, and solve for part B. Uh, now, given, uh, suppose the rope does snap. Suppose the rope breaks for some other reason. Maybe somebody cut it with a knife or whatever. And so here's my car again on this 20 degree incline. Oops, 20 theta equals 20 degrees. I'll redraw the car here. Okay, and here's the rope, but oh, oh, snap. Okay, so it snapped. So we, we no longer have that. So what we want to find is, um, it says, uh, the find, you know, how far will the car go? That's, that's delta x. That's my displacement of the car. If V final equals 35 meters per second. Now let's solve it. Now when you have to use force along with kinematics, you can almost always assume that the force, the forces will be able to give you the acceleration. So assume that you can figure out what the acceleration is. Now, here's what I'm given. I, I know that the initial velocity of the car is zero. I know the final velocity is 35. I know I can find the acceleration using force. And I'm trying to find delta x. Now, what kinematic quantity is missing here? Time. Now, I, I show this in a lot of my videos, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it again. Here's our four basic kinematic equations that we quite often use. Okay. Okay. These are the four kinematic equations. These all assume constant acceleration. Now I like to, when I decide which one is the most appropriate to use, I like to say, what's missing? What quantity is not in this equation? Well, in this first one, we don't have delta x. And in this, we don't have acceleration. In this, we don't have the final velocity. And in this equation, we don't have time. So. I look at a problem and I say, okay, what's missing from this problem? Use that equation. Well, I, um, I want to find delta x. So I'm certainly not going to use this equation. Uh, I can determine the acceleration. So acceleration isn't going to be missing. Uh, I'm given the final velocity, right? This is the final velocity. I, I'm, I'm, I'm given the final velocity, so I don't want to use this. But notice that I'm not given time, 
the time it takes for it to roll down the incline. And I'm not, I'm not trying to find it. It's missing. I'm not trying to find it. I'm not given it. So I'm going to use this equation. That's how I use kinematics, um, the kinematic equations, and find the, the appropriate equation to use. Okay, so uh, what am I? I've got v squared equals v naught squared plus twice the acceleration times the displacement. Now, we're trying to find uh, this. And so let's solve for it. Well, one thing we know, we know it starts from rest, so that eliminates that. So I can say, oh, okay, well, delta x is equal to v squared, just divide by 2a. Okay. Well, um, it's now, we, we know what the final velocity is, but we don't know what the acceleration is. But I, as I said earlier, I, I think we can find it. Now let's go back here. I'm going to, uh, rather than re completely redraw the free body diagram, I'm just going to say, look, here's my free body diagram, but now there's no tension force. The tension force is gone. So if I sum the forces in the x direction, that equals ma in the x, well, there is only one force in the x direction. Since this tension force no longer uh, is being applied to the car, the only force in the x direction is mg sine theta. And this is equal to ma. The acceleration is no longer zero. Okay. Oh, look, I can cancel out the mass of the car. And I can say, hey, the acceleration here is equal to g sine theta. Well, g is 9.8. Now I will use meters per second squared instead of newtons per kilogram. You can go back and forth as appropriate. Um, 20 degrees. And when you do this, you get, oh, okay, well, a, the acceleration, um, is equal to, and plug that in your calculator, and I got 3.35 meters per second when I round it off. And so this, I can now plug in here. So let's just squeeze it in here. V, the final velocity, was given to be 35 meters per second. I'm going to square that and then divide it by twice. This acceleration. And look how the units cancel. I have meters squared per second squared, and over here I just have meters per second squared. So this meter will cancel with the meter squared, leaving just meter, and the second squares cancel out all the way, leaving meters, which is what I want. Always check the units, a good way to make sure you're doing things the right way. When you plug all this into your calculator, we get our answer, delta x. I can just barely squeeze it in, is 183 meters. And there's my answer to part B. Okay. So I hope that all made sense to you. Uh, if you have any questions about this, leave a comment. And uh, hey, if you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up and... Uh, you know, the way YouTube works, it, it gets something a thumbs up, it, it gets out to more people. And that's what I would I'd like to do. Okay. All right. Well, have a great, uh, have a great day and uh, may the net force be with you.